morning. morning. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Waukesha. Whether you're joining us in person or online, we are glad that you are all here. In good keeping with good Presbyterian fashion, uh, got a few announcements this morning. Again, just wanted to reinforce the um, our social distancing and uh, COVID uh, policies. As far as if you are uh, fully vaccinated, uh, you are not required to wear a mask. Um, we're going to continue being socially distanced and not singing hymns. And if you do find that you have symptoms that might be COVID related, we do ask that you um, stay home. The spirit continues to work here in the church. As I mentioned last week, we're looking at trying to share space with a Waukesha City Church. Um, so we've talked to people about what might work in terms of moving services time and the like. So if you've not weighed in on that, please uh, do so. Um, right now, it seems like earlier is, is leading the charge, but we're going to see what works out with uh, the other churches. Um, and finally, if you do find yourself in uh, need of uh, pastoral care, please reach out to the church office, to Pastor Glenn, uh, to one of the deacons, uh, session members, and we'll be sure that we get that uh, get your need addressed. Um, any other announcements? Oh. oh, I do. I have a couple of announcements. I talked to David about this beforehand, and <laughs> he said that if I had forgotten, he'd just look at me and say, Glenn. So I was away, as you may know, this past week. Um, thank you, Andrew, by the way. And um, we were at my wife's celebration of her 70th birthday. To think that there are 30 years difference between her and me, it's just amazing, isn't it? Um, and so we had a delightful time, but on Sunday night, my daughter, um, oldest daughter, Caitlin, uh, was decided that she would drive, she, was, she didn't decide, she, she asked if I would drive with her out west. She had, was already going on this trip by herself. And so she said, Dad, would you go with me? And I'm like, mm. and we had about this much of internet available to us in a small corner of our Airbnb. So three of us huddled into the small corner of the Airbnb and found a flight from Tacoma, Washington. No, that's not true. From, I keep saying Katoma, whatever that word is to Spokane, Washington, all the way back to Madison on Wednesday. So I drove with her starting on Monday. We made it to past Rapid City, then to um, Butte, Montana, and then through Coeur d'Alene to Spokane. And then I, came ba I flew back, and she continued on her trip to Seattle. So it was, I earned dad points, as the saying goes. And some of you know those are important points to make. So thank you for um, being able to be able to do that. Um, I did actually show up here on Thursday and managed to put together this service um, for us today. So it's good to be back. Jen. You gonna come up? Morning. Um, a few weeks ago, Glenn mentioned that the girls and I are going to be reaching out to some of you for our time capsule in the fall. And I thought I would put out any feelers if folks have any questions that they think would be good questions for us to ask. So if you think of any good questions, let us know. We have a running list, a um, couple that Kaylin has um, written down for us. But if anybody has ideas, let me know and we will be reaching out to some of you shortly. Thanks. Hey, thank you. Anybody else? This was a good Presbyterian morning, so thank you for that. Um, so with that, let's take a moment to welcome God into our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship. I 
I now invite you to stand as you are able and join me in our responsive call to worship that is in the bulletin. With friends and strangers, family and neighbors, we gather. With faith reaching out to touch, with hearts straining to trust, we hope. With word and wonder, the silence and song, we wait. Let us confess our sins to God, confident in God's promise to forgive us, heal us, and transform us. For let us first together out, uh, first together out loud, and then in our, the silence of our hearts, we pray. Jesus Christ, you reached across the ethnic boundaries between Samaritan, Roman, and Jew, and offered fresh sight to the blind and freedom to captives. Help us to break down the barriers in our community. Enable us to see the reality of racism and bigotry and free us to challenge and uproot it from ourselves, our society, and our world. Scripture says, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us show each other a sign of that peace. And remember the lovely Allison up there. Allison, remember the, 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 the Rose Parade wave, Allison. Rose Parade wave. That's it. That's
Let the people say, Amen. Thank you, Allison. Thank you. Let's pray. If all that we do today here, Lord, is to discover your presence in our midst, then we are blessed. And we ask only to be given you through these words, through my mouth. May we be touched by you this day. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. Verses 21 through 43. This is what's known as a Markin sandwich, um, and you'll see why. He starts a story, and then he interrupts the story with another story, and then he finishes the first story, and that's kind of the Markin sandwich. Okay? When Jesus is crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd followed him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, fell at Jesus' feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so she might be made well and live. So Jesus went with Jairus. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now, there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I were to clutch, touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped. And she felt in her body that she was healed from her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? 
And the disciples said to him, you see the crowds pressing in on you, and how can you say who touched me? Jesus looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling. fell down before him and told the whole truth. Jesus said to the woman, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher any further? But overhearing what they had said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. Jesus allowed no one to follow him except James and Peter and John, the brother of James. And when they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when Jesus had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. They laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who are with him. He went in to where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha, kum which means, little girl, get up. And immediately, the little girl got up and began to walk around. She was about 12 years of age. And at this, they were overcome with amazement. Jesus strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her, told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. This is not going to be the usual sermon or service today. In just a bit, I'm going to ask three of you, three brave folks, to come and sit in these chairs in front of everyone. Then I'm going to ask three other congregational members to come forward and stand behind these brave souls. While Karen is playing, either place your hands on their shoulders or right above their heads. We will be praying for healing. It's simple, really. People all over the world are praying for healing from all sorts of reasons, personal and corporate, They're praying for healing of our world. Perhaps we desire healing for our own personal physical health or memories of past wrongs done to us or harm inflicted on us, past childhood trauma, words that we we spoke in haste or that we would like to take back, meanness that we have done perhaps or trust that we have shattered other people's betrayals or broken promises, fissures in relationships that have widened slowly over time that we have allowed to occur. So I'd like us to take a moment to consider what you and I might bring to God to get today for healing, for we're all in need of healing. You think, pray, and reflect, and I'll talk a little bit more as you do so. These stories about healing in Scripture are not just about the power that Jesus had, nor are they about his living into his commission to teach and heal. He came to teach and heal. They're also about the power and commission that we, as a community of Christ, gathered in the name of Christ, have as well. 
We're not here on Sunday mornings merely to listen to some allegedly erudite person lecture on what Jesus did a long time ago. We're here to learn how to do what Jesus did. Church is the school in which each of us learns how to be Jesus, how to do what Jesus did, and through his power and the Spirit's power, now continue his holy work to do and to be who Jesus wants us to be. We don't do this by ourselves. The Spirit is with us. The scriptures guide us. And we have this community with people we trust. Because we, will, we make mistakes. It's what forgiveness is all about. We are to become a place of healing. Not just learn how to show compassion to those around us and to act and speak kindly and lovingly into our greedy and violent world. That is amazing in and of itself. But let me say that again. We come to church to learn how to show compassion to those around us and act and speak kindly and lovingly into our greedy and violent world. We also come to church to be healed. For we are a healing community. This is a claim that, rounds, that runs counter to our culture. We're taught, not how, we're taught not how to show where we have been hurt, where we have been wounded. We are socialized not to be vulnerable or to show weakness in any way. Excuse the ex expressions, but man up. Guns loaded and locked. Every person for themselves. These, is, these are the phrases of our culture. How many movies, how many TV shows use those tropes? They are not the phrases of Jesus. Come unto me, all you are weary and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. We worship a God of second and third or more chances. Seventy times seven, after all. Our common unity is Jesus. Jesus is at the center of our community. Give me Jesus at the center of our church. I hope it is of help for us all to think of ourselves as a healing community, that we are in need of healing and restoration, and that we recognize this not only in ourselves, but in others and in our world. When we admit our need of Jesus, then we're empowered to turn to Jesus for our own healing, as well as dwell in the power to heal others and our planet. In just a bit, I'm going to ask three of you, three brave people, they don't always have to be elders after all, to come and sit in these chairs in front of everyone. And then three other brave souls to come and stand behind them and place their hands either above their heads or on their shoulders as we pray for healing for these three people. Then the three people in the front go back to their seats. The three people in the back take their seats and three more come up. So we're not talking about just six people here. We're talking about everyone having the chance to come forward and to have hands laid on them. I have oils with me, so I'm channeling my inner Catholic priest and I will anoint you if you so want. So as Karen plays now, I invite us all to take a moment to consider what we might bring to God today for healing and allow us to be used by Jesus as instruments of healing.
wanted to get some practice in, huh? So as we begin this moment of being able to be pray for healing and be prayed for, I invite you to take some deep breaths. Breathing in, do not be afraid. Breathing out, I am here. Again, do not be afraid. I am here. And then just close your eyes for a moment and listen to these quick stories of women and men who sought out Jesus, longing for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We watch as a woman enters Simon's home and sits at the feet of Jesus. Seeking forgiveness, she begins to weep as she anoints his feet with her tears and dries them with her hair. And as we sit in the feet of Jesus, are there areas of our lives we need to ask for forgiveness? Am I holding on to feelings of anger or resentment toward a friend or a spouse? a classmate, or a family member? We sit with Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, on the side of a road as he begs to strangers who pass by, and when he hears that Jesus is passing by, he cries out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. We often cry to Jesus with our struggles of inner darkness or blindness, What prevents us from seeing ourselves as God sees us? Do we have the courage to believe that Jesus hears us even when it feels hopeless? Or are we overwhelmed because of our own sense of loss, sadness, or depression? We stand in a crowd and watch as a woman caught in adultery is brought before Jesus for judgment. And after bending down and writing on the ground, Jesus stands and says to the woman, Has no one condemned you? She replies, No one, sir. Then Jesus says, Neither do I. Jesus invites us to stop judging ourselves and others and receive his peace, for he does not condemn us. We watch as a paralyzed man is lowered through the roof of a house by his friends and placed before Jesus. When Jesus saw his fa- their faith, he says, as for you and your sins, as for you, your sins are forgiven. Not only are his sins forgiven, but he is told by Jesus to stand up, pick up his stretcher, and go home. Who are the people we carry with us that we place before Jesus so they too may receive healing? We meet a woman who has been suffering for 12 years with an illness. She too has heard about Jesus. Pushing her way through the crowd, she comes up behind him and reaches out and touches his garment. She knows immediately that her body is healed. Let us remember those who are living with long-term illnesses or chronic pain, along with those who live on our city streets, or experiencing the traumatic effects of war. May they be touched and experience Jesus' love and healing through our prayers. What is it that we bring for healing this day?
Since the days of the early church, Christians have used the laying of hands and anointing with oil as a sign of the working of the Spirit. When the member of the community was in need of healing, the elders and other members of the community gathered around the sick person to pray for healing. Today, each of us will experience both sides of the healing bond of this community of faith. So now, I invite three brave souls to come forward and sit in these chairs. While others come up and stand behind you to pray silently over you. And as you stand behind someone, place your hand over the person's head or onto their shoulders and simply let the healing love of God flow from the community of church through you. As these individuals are being prayed for, let us all, the community gathered, pray for healing for them by raising our hands toward them. How signal when the time is over. When the signal happens, stand and acknowledge the person who prayed for you but with a bow, simple bow, or maybe the universal sign for thank you. Do you know this sign? Thank you. I think it's with this hand, actually. So, Is that right? The right hand. And then those who are behind the chair come forward and sit in their chair, and the others take their seats. At the very end, it gets a little awkward, so whoever were the first three can come behind at the very end to pray for the last three. Okay? And if you'd like... I have my oils here, and I'll stand over there, and I will anoint you if you would like. Simple cross on the forehead. And then return to your seat and pray for everybody else who is coming forward. All right? Karen?
Let us pray. Loving God, we're grateful for your presence here among us, working through each of us in ways that we could never have thought possible. For you are a God of new beginnings. You open where we have shut. You heal where we have thought it would not be possible. You come to us, even in our fear. You breathe hope into us, even in darkness. So thank you for this time. And may the working of your spirit in our lives bring us to health and wholeness in ways that are freeing ways in which we can become a blessing to this world. We pray all this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's amazing how many people came to Jesus to be healed, not just of physical ailments, but also remember the, the person that had the legion of demons. There's so much in our world that traps us, and Jesus offers us the possibility of freedom and a great peace. May the peace of Christ remain with us now and always. Amen. Thank you for allowing this experiment to happen. It's rare that Presbyterians even touch each other, let alone pray for healing for each other. Congratulations. Uh oh, how wonderful to hear. Good. Yeah, I had shortness with my first one. I'm so glad. I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> you can see her again. Have a good week. <laughs>